G'day, how you going? I'm Ian Harris from Australia here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Did you see the painting in the opening credits there? Bit of a mountain, blue sky, some clouds and scenery there. Well, that's what I want to paint for you today and show you how you can paint along with me, all right? So get your friends around at home, have a painting party, put the YouTube channel on of me or whoever you like, get your painting friends over and paint along with us, all right? Now, what I'm gonna use here is a canvas board that I've made up and the sizes are right there written on the screen for you to see like that all right and as normal the colors are going to go up the screen there as well so you can pause them and write them down and catch up as well all right so what we'll do I better take my glasses off and um, we'll come down on the palette here it's a palette not a canvas because I always get these two mixed up so we're going to come down on the palette and we'll prep the canvas. It's raw, whether it's gesso primed or not, I still do this procedure, all right? So get on down here. Okay, down on my palette, I have some flowing white paint and some retarder. And I'm also gonna use the blue color I want for the sky, which let's say you can use primary blue, French ultramarine, well, I'm using phalo blue. And we've got some, clear medium retarder what that does that slows down the drying time of this acrylic paint now i'm going to just lightly put a light mist onto that canvas and back down here i'm going to mix up some of this white flowing paint with the retarder so as we've got a nice surface to blend on because we're just going to have a simple sky and maybe just one clump of clouds oh get this in. I've taped the edges up so I'll get a nice white border on here. So let's get all this onto roughly where I want the sky to be. Now I'm going to get this brush and I'm pushing it right into all those fibres there because sometimes you can get little potholes and they can annoy you. Now I don't know if you can see on the camera but that is very wet and wanting. Oh, it's so wet. Alrighty, back down on my palette, I'm using the phalo blue and it has some medium retarder as well. Medium retarder is a medium and the medium is called a retarder which retards the drying time of your acrylic paints. Now I don't want the sky too dark, alright, I want it nice and pale blue. So I'll come down to the horizon here like this. I'm going to scratch it into the edge of the board there. I'm just getting it on. The best way to get it on is just to get it on with a nice size brush and don't muck around with it. Now we'll, that's about the tone I want. Now I'll brush those strokes horizontally. And now I want to add some more white into that to tone it down some more. Now down here I've gone and added another dollop of that flowing white paint. I haven't washed this brush and there's no retarder in that because there's plenty on the board. And we'll get this in there like that. That's about the temperament I think I want it. Nice and soft blue, look at that. And it's very pale down the bottom. All right, you can leave it like that if you desire, but me, I'm a particular person, so I'm just gonna stamp out those brush strokes. I have a two inch blending brush, and I'm just gonna slowly stamp along and stamp along and dab all them out, so it sort of looks like it's spray painted, so to speak, okay? So I'm gonna do that all over my paint on my blue sky there. Now, we've got our blue sky on. That was pretty easy so far. Now let's get on to the next step. We're gonna put a cloud in here and I wanna give this cloud some sort of tone and shadow. So I've done sort of like a purpley, tony shadow. So this time I'm gonna do a gray one, all right? So come on down here. Okay, there's the grey. It is carbon grey and I've got titanium white here. That's the flow white, but this is titanium white now. So this is thicker. It's a thicker body 
and that's what I'm going to use for my clouds. So I just want to see how light I should have some of this grey. I don't want it too strong for the clouds. So we'll get some of this mixed up like I've done in other videos. It was a different tone of grey. It was like a purpley grey. But I don't want it too loud. Back up here, let's work out where you want a cloud. So I'm just going to grab some of this and put it on there. Or oh, hang on, first I'd rather put the white cloud on first. All right. So I'm going to pick that up with another brush. Get my cloud on roughly where I want him. Make the top of the cloud, so to speak. Put that down. Pick up some of that grey you mixed up and lace it within the body and the bottom of that cloud, but not in big blobs, all right? Then grab yourself a blending brush. To the size of that cloud, I'm only gonna use like a half inch, and I'm gonna blend that gray, just tap it and blend it into that white, tassel it out, make it airy, fairy, cloudy-like, and have a paper towel or a rag on hand at the same time. Get rid of any blobs that you see and merge those two colours together. All right, and keeping the the bottom of the cloud so it looks like it's got a bottom and it's sitting in the sky. So it's obviously full of water or something, you know, and we can tickle the tops as well. There we go, there's one cloud. Now I'm picking up the titanium white again on my fan brush and I'll probably have something a bit smaller over here in the distance. Getting some distinct white on there. That blue's so, so wet. That'll do, let's not go too big. Pick up your other brush that you got the toning shadow color on, which is this one. Use any brush, anything that you find that works for you. And dance that on in there, okay? Put that down like a gentleman. Pick up the blending brush you had before. And I'm dabbing on and off on and off finding the temperament of how my cloud's gonna look. Wipe the brush, do a bit at a time and wipe it, and you want that gray blended through that white sitting at the bottom of your cloud, just so it's like it's sitting in the, the distance there. All right. Just very lightly. See, I'm not washing the hell out of it back into the sky like I've seen some people do and they're wondering why they're having trouble with their clouds. I'm trying to make the top a bit unlike a V. There we go. Now we'll put our last cloud in the middle, a big one. So I'm using a bigger fan brush, just something to apply that white paint on. Now this blue is wet. I don't want to rub it in because I'll turn all this white paint into baby blue. I want to try and stamp it on. So I want something about here, trying to get the top of it. Even if you have to rewash it, and apply the paint again. I'm making that, because this is gonna be behind the mountain, all right? I'm gonna wash that paint brush real quickly in my little caddy down here. Wipe the brush and add some more white paint, just so as we can get something over here. See, it's nice and white. Okay. Now we're going to pick up our grey, and I'm using another fan brush now because it's a bigger cloud, so this will get me my greys everywhere. And I want some greys in this, so I'm coming here. Bit up there, down the bottom, bit in there. Just something to, there we go. Now we're going to pick up another blending brush, which is, I've got a two inch one. And I want to do the same again. Start with the greys. I'm tapping and dancing that grey into the white. Twist. Get some of this grey. Blend it down. Nice and easy. So we're twisting and marbling that white and grey paint. Twisting the hell out of it. Combining them and making them like, I don't know, just like clouds. Tickle the tops a little bit, not too much. There we go. 
And you can keep doing that till the cows come home, but we better stop. How's that looking in my monitor? Just want to whisper out there a bit. I've just blow dried this now because I want to put in the foreground mountain. So, so grab yourself a pencil. Oh, hang on a minute. That ain't a pencil. This is a pencil. Now come over here and we'll just draw in a simple outline of your mountain the way you want it to look, all right? If anything, it's always good to have your mountains coming up off your painting, not down on the edge, okay? And then we'll probably have something coming up here. Just draw the top of your mountains. I want some of this mountain whispering behind those um, clouds there. Coming down here, like so. And I don't know, I might do a a ridge like this, um, something like that. Now with these mountains, they sort of have ridges coming down them like that, off there like that, and they'll be, there'll be darkened lights in there, okay? And just something sort of like that, somewhere to paint in, all right? All right, this is where you can grab yourself a flathead brush. I'm going to just dampen it a bit. And I want the black and green mixed together. Where's that green? So I don't want it just fully black. I want it like a really dark green. Now, it's very clay, so I'm dipping the brush into some water just so as we can get some movement from the brush to transfer onto the canvas. And to me, that's a beautiful dark green. All right, now get your edge, see these flathead brushes? We can come along here, scoot down there, stop there, and that can be colored in, all right? Where's the edge of my tape? Somewhere there. See, that's why I dried the sky, so it's, um not going to mud up and mix on the canvas as I'm adding this because it's got water in it. Now I'm going to see here, this is the darker bit here. I'll get the, the edge of it nice and sharp coming up here. And I'm going to tease those clouds back in front of this mountain when I'm done. So let me just quickly get this done. Sorry about that, my camera wasn't on while I was doing all that. I want to get this bit here. Um, what, I, what I was doing there, I was, I was just putting these colours in and going in the shape of the mountain there. And I'm doing it like this because it's sort of like I'm blending it as I'm putting it on. Because I want some of the darks still left in there. I don't want it just big solid colours on there. And where my lines are, I'm just going over them so you can't see them, okay? Now these are lighter colours in here, coming up, just Now I've done my sap green, I've probably got more bits I can add later. Now I'm picking up the forest green on that brush and I want these dark bits in forest green and leaving a lot of the dark within them. So these are making the ridges in the mountains dark and light, you see? And then if you want, you can bring some of the black back up to tease it if it's a bit light in some spaces. But all this, it's just a simple, I'm gonna wipe that brush and see that ridge right there, see here? We can sort of just dab on that and just lighten the load of it so it looks more like nature intended it to be. Dribble that down into there. I haven't dried enough and I'm just stamping this as I go, getting light and dark greens on there, you see? And it's just making some sort of ridgy mountain. So I'm gonna get a, a lot more of this in there. See now, done that I'm going to wipe the brush and see how this is lines here I want to ooze that into it bleed it into it blend it into it just like that 
just so it's a soft transition okay and once we've done this we can add a bit more of the blacky greeny color again if there's bits that need darker colors but you can see what's happening let's soften that up a bit there as well i look in my monitor and it gives me a good view of what needs fixing up it's like squinting my eyes now some of these pieces here i want some darks in them as well so i'm using this dark forest green making ridges i can highlight some of this as well all back up in here this is nice and dark as here getting some of this forest green running down in front of there I'm not worried if I'm going over the black edge there and making it a bit um, hairy looking because it's these are virtually distant trees you know and then when we highlight this it'll sort of give it that distant mountain look now I'm getting the yellow oxide and the sap green and I'm putting them together but I'm, I'm not mixing them hundred percent I just want them marbly so to speak You don't want your brush too loaded up for this either. And these bits here, they're going to be just highlighted with this. And why I say you don't want it too loaded up is because you want to kind of, like there, wipe the brush. If you feel it's too green, add some more yellow oxide. Grab the brush and merge those two together just like that because they're the top of the ridge there and it's just highlighting way into there like that there we go look at that eh how's that looking in the monitor there get my nose out of the way i notice my nose gets in there a lot eh i wonder if i've got any blackheads any blackheads in my nose if i've got any blackheads just say yeah if i haven't just say no blackheads all right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Look at that. I want to do some more of that. All right, we'll get some over here coming down here now. It's just the, the highlight of the ridge coming down the mountain. that looking here yeah, that's all right see i'm going to wipe the brush and see how these are all like brushy strokey i'm going to oh, wipe it a bit more in wipe the hell out of that and i want to just ooze them together just like that it just gives it a bit more i feel and then we can always add darker colors back but this needs to be i'm going to pick up i'll just show you what i mean some of this has um where are we yeah there we go not too bright don't want it too bright this is just the yellow oxide now it's sort of like the ground cover in the green don't want to kill too much of it all right now to sink some of these pieces down i've just picked up some black dabbed it into my brush and i want to get those distinct darker colors of the um valleys in there in within these mountains here where it's also how's that looking in the monitor yeah that's it that's it really dark behind here and merge that up into this area here if i can that's it and we'll get all this sort of dark and 
bleed him up into that green so it's fading into that green there. Can that sort of have the most tiniest lighty bit just in there? Now over here, we'll mix up some more of that green and yellow oxide, just marbly like. And over here, we'll get some of this on the edge here. And then we'll quickly, we'll dance that down And then we'll quickly get that ridge there. We'll get this brush wiped and I'll tease all that into there as well. Because these are just other little gullies and ridges within this mountain. And I just want to quickly soften those edges up. And if we need to put some of the darker colour back, well we can. And I want to just highlight some of this with the yellow oxide, with more of the yellow oxide probably coming over there like that. Yeah, we got that pulling it forward a bit. And probably a bit over here. Leaving some of the darks. Now we're picking up the yellow oxide just to finish it off, so it's more of a brownie sort of scoring colour there you see it might look a bit a highlighter in the camera I just had a look but in the painting it's yellow oxide and we got to find all these bleeding off from there there we go we'll get some Coming down here, because this is going to have a foreground in front of it, so little bits of highlights in there. Oh, they look a bit stupid. I can darken them back anyway. Some of this is cascading. I want down here, and um, get some of this. Just on these peaks, just killing those peaks so they don't look like a cone. Oh, get my brush nice and flat. And I want to come along here and I want to bring all this down into there. Bring it down so it's like it's wrapping down. Not too fat, not too thin. Get some of this. That's already got it there. Now this is going to come in front of that because I just want to really fix this up with some yellow green, make it look really yummy. You can see we're just getting shadows here and there when you put them in and you realise what's looking good and you might have boo-booed so you put the lighter colour back over it and move it. Unless you're an expert at this. I ain't no expert at this, but um, I don't mind mucking around like this. It's fun. See, this is just black that I've got on here, just teasing it through everything here. Just slowly... You know, there's very minimal on the brush. You put a lot on there, that's when you start destroying your, your piece. Now I'm grabbing some yellow green with my another flathead brush, but it's that one you've seen me use. It's like a little miniature blending brush. 
but I want to get this on there and walk it off it. And I want some um, highlights coming down here like a, a ridge. How's that looking? Yeah, that's looking all right. I can see some blobby bits there, so I'll put the brush on its edge a bit. Go again. We don't want it to... Just want to highlight the, the middle of these a bit as well. Just so there's some highlighted foliage on there. Yeah, that's looking good. Not too highlighty, Ian. Just easy does it. Easy, easy does it. Is that looking? Yep, getting there, getting there, and just the lightest. I just want because I'm trying to imagine the lights above, above all this, and it's just hitting areas. Okay, and what can we put in the distance there? Probably just the littlest bit here somewhere. Oh, that might have been a bit too much. And some down in here now, all, all of this into that black, leaving some darker colours there. Because this is more front, more closer to us. So when this painting's finished, it's going to look nice. This is going to be one of my good ones as well. Just the slightest on these ridges. See, they're the slightest. Very little. How's that looking? I'm, I'm, I'm looking back in the monitor all the time, so excuse my head moving or the slight pause in my brush strokes. If I pause in my strokes, it means I'm looking in my monitor. Like I said before, the monitor's like I'm squinting my eyes. If you're painting at home, if you have a smartphone with a camera on it, I've done it before, even before I started filming. You just put the camera on and look through the phone onto the painting and it gives you a good idea. It's like squinting your eyes. It's, it's, it's a great way to judge where you might need some highlights or dark tones or aspects like that, you know? And I want the lightest, just like the tops getting hit up here. Oh, don't go into that black anywheres. Somewhere there. Yeah, that's looking good. And just maybe there. Now later on, I'm going to dry this because I want to just creep that cloud into the top of that mountain or the, it's like Something like I did here, I got inspired by this and I want to do that sort of sky cloud mountain greenery. Oh, 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 I love a good coffee. Now we're going to bring some beautiful light foreground here. So let's get into that. I've gone for a wider flathead brush and I want to, I'll just dampen that, wipe the water off it. And then I just want to lay it in the edge of this up like a chisel. And I want really thin. This is like a field in front of this because I'm going to have some trees just sitting this back as well. So this is just going to add some light and dark aspects to this painting. How far do I want to come? Just about there, because I just want something. Leave some black there. Not a ton of black, but leave some there. And this is just making some beautiful... Um, what do they call that? Sweet and sour grass. Or what do we call it over here? Lemongrass. It's got this vibrant colour to it. <laughs> now I'm getting my yellow oxide and the sap green, and I'm mixing them together like a sort of a leafy colour onto my blending brush. And we just want to stamp some kind of um, stuff in front of this now. So I'm going to get this 
cascading. I've dried this green bit of grass here. So I'll virtually get that, let's say there, I'll stamp all this in where I want it, and then I can look in my monitor and see which way I want to go with the shape, because I don't want it just looking like that. I want it sort of coming, let's say about here, and get some nice shrubs and bushes here. Okay, then pick up some more, and I want to get a, some sort of, a, I don't know, a tree here. I don't want to kill too much of me mountain. All right. I hope you're not thinking I'm destroying it. I hope I don't destroy it. And I want that to sort of come out like a, some sort of, some sort of tree. There we go. Now I want a bit of darker colour of that, so let's grab a bit of green into it. I'm just stamping up some of the forest green into that mixture, just so I can get this edge here a bit darker. Is it going to go darker or do I got to draw it? Ah, we'll work it out. I'll change this up with some forest green because that yellow oxide was a bit a bit light I want some bushes here just some conifer type bushes all in front coming across the front of the painting here can hide some of the front of that just coming down, block it all in. So let me finish this. How big is that file? Oh, no, I can still go. And maybe a bit out here, just coming down. Go. I want to grab a bit of, I haven't cleaned that brush, I want to grab a bit of black into it, alright, and in these bushes I want to sort of see where I want dark bits to be, so I want to kind of stamp them in it, in it here and there, let me have a look in my monitor there, get some of the bottom coming up into these bushes there, uh, so this can come about there. Just so I can get some kind of, um, and then I'll highlight all this. Get a black, pull it off. Get some black tees through here. I've got some um, yellow oxide and a bit of black tees with it. Very wet. I've got it on my script liner because this tree here, which you can barely see at the moment, I want to put a trunk on that and get some sort of minimal branches coming out because I'm going to highlight this as I mean yeah highlight these now I'm going to grab my scenery brush which I like for scenery I've wet me yellow green so it's going to transfer I've dried what's on the canvas there and I just want to highlight these shrubs just over that background like that see very lightly I don't want big smashing blobs everywhere I'll put one in the front there like that see so we've created shrubbery now this tree here let me make sure that's not too blobby we'll create the top of this tree and I'm sinking that trunk back down now whatever trees these are I don't know leave a bit of black and we'll put a shrub in front of there as well. Okay, we're creating some shrubs and conifers and all sorts of things here. Where I put that black. Some in front like that. See how easy they are? I want to go along. 
and like I said, my sun's kind of way at the top. You don't want it the same colour as your mountains and hills. If I've done that in the past and it just all clashes. Everything clashes and it's like, oh no, what have I done? Here we go. I haven't cleaned that brush. I'm just sort of getting some yellow on there. I might have to wet it a little. Oh, I don't really want to. I'll put a bit of, just a bit of a spray there because I wanted that yellow green to mix with the yellow and this will be the intense highlights so these aren't so greeny green so let's see where are we just separate all the bushes like that with these highlights Just where the sun's coming down and hitting them all, you see? And don't overdo it. You can see this bush is in front of that, so just, just like that, see? This bush is in front of that, just like that, see? And see this one here? Let's give him a friendly highlight as well, right on the edge. Now we have our raw umber down here, just finishing it off with a small to medium sized flathead brush. This is going to finish it off because this is what's missing from the painting. Chisel him on there like that and we'll go about here. Right there like that. Get him. Darken it up. I don't want it too fat. Now we've got our trunk for our palm tree. Pick up some white here. Not too white. Let's get it a bit tinted with that raw umber. And you just want to come, let's just come from one side in a roundabout motion, creating the rounds of the trunk. I'm using a flathead brush because it's so easy to keep the edge on it. There we go, I'll wipe that because I want to pull. Actually, that trunk's a bit skinny down there. So we'll get it a bit wider first. There we go. We'll wipe that off just so as we can pull that highlight around the wet trunk and get that blended wood sort of look. I've dried all those shrubs in front there. Pull that into the trunk like so. So we've got some tone into it. And then we can grab just the white on its own, just chisel it onto the brush. Not big blobs. We just want the lightest again, just periodically up this trunk. Just periodically. That word sounds good, eh? And then you can probably wipe that through as well. I've wet me brush and I'm picking up the forest green, probably with a bit of black in it as well, because I want it to transfer from the brush onto the canvas. And we're just gonna do our simple palm tree. So that's dry, is it? Yes. And like I do it before, just go up, pull. Just simple. This is not gonna be a big, massive killer. Just 
because I'll just highlight this. Now it's going to look like a the spokes of a wheel when it's finished, but then like I showed you before, you thicken it up. I don't want to do it too much over me beautiful sky there. These are easy to do like this. I'm going to do more, but I'll just show you what I mean. Now, like I've said before, make the middle busy. Like so, just sort of get it all busy, because when you highlight it, it sort of brings it into perspective. Now I've just finished the the branches with that black and forest green mixed together. Now I'm just going to sort of gently wipe that brush. Let's pick up some of this yellow green and use that to give some of this some highlights. That's it. Gently, don't overkill it. You need to bring the branches within the centre to sit stuff down as well. How's that looking on the monitor? That's it, that's looking all right. I better pick up some more of that. Get him up there. So the black and the green that we've done is added the, val uh, the depth to our foliage. It. Now just to finish this off, that's dry. I'm, I'm going to dry that. That's still a bit tacky. We're going to bring that cloud over the mountain. If you feel you can't do this, put your cloud higher and just have it above the mountain. I might darken some of these up off camera later on, but that's it for the tutorial. Now get yourself your brush you want to blend that with. I'm grabbing the titanium white. I'm putting it on the brush. And then I'm wiping it off. And there's me cloud. I'm going to sort of come in front now. I might have to bring some of the grey into it as well. How's that looking? Yep, that's looking good. Because these are high mountains in, um, where would they be? What's it called? Hawaii. Somewhere like that. Let's get that a bit over there. How's that looking? I'm just looking in the monitor to... See, that's highlighting that grey. Beautiful too, I've just noticed. I'll load up my brush again and wipe it. Because I want it a bit more fluffy and dense here. And if I think it's too white, I'll just add the grey to it. Because this is a big cloud. I've just added some more grey into that bit there. Now I'm sort of just blending everything together. There's too much on my brush, so I'm going to have to wipe it again. I'm getting, I'm trying to get some highlights into this cloud as well, just to suit. There we go. I'm liking that. We'll bring that a bit wider there. That highlight. Yeah, that's looking good. And just some here. Where are? Yes. Dance up, dance up, dance up. That's it. How's that looking? See, and we could probably do the same to this. Don't do this if you're not too sure of it. I'm, I'm mucking around here because I'm a bit of a silly bugger. All right, now we can sign this painting and uh, put a frame on it and see how she looks, okay? I just want the very smallest autograph. Even if your autograph is not neat, so long as it resembles the look of your autograph, that's the main thing. Now we'll pull the tape off. Let's put a frame on that. There we go, we've got a nice Hawaiian mountain volcano hill in the background, a big cascading fluffy cloud coming over the top, some others there. 
and we have a beautiful one of those big long skinny tall palm trees with some front foliage that's not too shabby eh all right i hope you like this little art exercise share like and subscribe to my youtube channel and if you like what i've done today you tell your friends but if you don't tell everybody all right goodbye good luck good on you